Today is Wednesday, September 20th, 2023. My, the year is flying by, isn't it? My name is Mark Beavis. On the program today, the U.S. Federal Reserve announced its interest rate decision earlier today. We'll bring you up to date on that. Also, we have the latest inflation numbers from both Canada and Britain. Plus, looks like we've averted a Canadian auto strike, but the U.S. situation is still very much unclear. And finally today, if you cook with olive oil, prepare to dig deeper into your pocketbook. Let's get started with today's news. For the second time in its past three meetings now, the U.S. Federal Reserve left its key interest rate unchanged when it met earlier today. This could be taken as signs that its fight against inflation, which has been going on now for about a year and a half, is finally starting to take hold. But I will caution with that said that they did also signal during the meeting today that they do expect to raise rates one more time this year. Now, since March of 2022, they have raised interest rates 11 times now. The current range that they're in is 5.25 to 5.5%. In fact, since they began their tightening phase, there have only been two meetings that the Fed has not actually raised rates. Uh, they remain at a what is now a 22-year high. Uh, during the same time, of course, inflation has dropped from a peak of 9.1% back in June of 2022, and it was 3.7% just this past month. Uh, still almost double what the Feds uh, want for their target of 2%, but it does show that some of the tightening measures may be starting to have a material uh, effect. As part of the announcement today, the Fed projected that they envision that rates will stay high late into 2024. They also announced that they expect to cut rates two more times this year. If we look at the guidance that has been provided by these policymakers, we can expect rates to be at 5.5% to 5.75% by the end of 2023. Canada's latest inflation numbers are out with Stats Canada reporting on Tuesday that inflation came in at an annual pace of 4%, and that is up from 3.3% in July. Notably here, these numbers came in quite a bit higher than what analysts had uh, had reported or had expected. The expectation was that inflation would hit 3.8% in August, but it did come in at 4 As has been the case, in recent months, energy prices had a, a big effect on the overall number. Uh, prices at the pump for gasoline increased 4.6% last month. Uh, one of the big problems we have here is that energy prices have such a major effect overall uh, they account for a big part of the number, and they also, of course, filter down into so many other areas of the economy. We look at transportation, we look at production costs, higher inflation in energy also uh, passes down to those sectors as well. With its recent increase here, this raises the specter of another rate hike that is coming uh, when the Bank of Canada meets for the next rate decision, which will be October 25th. There will be one more inflation number that comes out in September before that meeting, and you can be sure that the uh, bank will be watching that report very, very closely. So far since the Bank of Canada started raising rates last March, we have seen them raise 10 times. When we look at the money markets as an indicator, they're suggesting uh, today that there's a 42% chance of an increase at the upcoming October meeting. There was some good news in the most recent numbers. While still rising, the, uh, the price of food increases did slow down a little bit. A food purchased from stores increased by 6.9% year over year, and that compares with 8.5% uh, back in July. Although it is still an increase, it's now the slowest annual increase in grocery prices uh, since January of 2022. Again, this month, shelter prices rose a lot. In August, the prices rose 6%. That follows a 5.1% uh, increase in July. Uh, this has been pushed up by rising rental rates and, of course, by higher interest rates. Um, as we've seen recently, the mortgage interest cost index rose another 30.9% in August, and that follows a raise of 30.6% uh, back in July. The Bank of Canada is maintaining its battle to bring inflation rate back down to its 2% target, uh, but current forecasts are that inflation will remain near 3% at least until next year. Hey folks, as many of you know, in addition to this YouTube channel, we also have the Investing Academy. This is our online platform and we work with Canadians of all ages from across the country to help educate about investing and financial issues in general. The course material is designed to take you from a raw beginner to a fully confident investor. I will put a link in the description of this video and maybe check us out. Now back to the video. In economic news from overseas, inflation in Britain slowed now for the third consecutive month in August, numbers coming in at 6.7% from a year earlier. And this caught a lot of economists off guard as expectations were that inflation would rise, especially in light of the recent surge in global energy prices. 
Uh, in the UK, core inflation fell to 6.2%, down from 6.9% in July. Uh, again, that is a faster decline than uh, a lot had projected. The relevance to us here in Canada is that uh, the probability that the Bank of Canada would hold interest rates steady at the current 5.25% rose from 20% pr prior to the announcement up to 57%. We will know the decision soon enough. The bank, uh, the bank's policy committee meets tomorrow, September 21st. So this number, when you couple it with other evidence of the um, economy shrinking in the UK, uh, does point to the fact that there should be a lot of pressure on the Monetary Policy Committee to just hold rates steady. Big news earlier today, it appears as though a strike of Canadian auto workers at Ford has thankfully been averted. Uh, Unifor, the union that represents the auto workers here in Canada, it announced that they have struck a tentative deal uh, with the automaker. This should hopefully keep about 5,000 union members on the job and it certainly comes as a relief to the industry. Uh, at the time this video is being filmed, there weren't any, de any details available of the announcement. It's also not clear immediately how this is going to impact negotiations that are going on in the U.S. between the United Auto Workers and Ford, as well as the other two major automobile makers, both uh, uh, General Motors and Stellantis. Uh, the UAW, still on strike, has said that it will strike against more U.S. plants by this Friday if significant progress isn't made in its ongoing talks. The uh, automobile workers in the U.S. did launch a strike against the big three automakers last week. Currently, there are around 12,700 of the 150,000 total members who work for the big three out on strike. If you are a chef and you have a pension for using olive oil in your cooking, this isn't good news. According to the U.S. Departure of Agriculture, global prices for olive oil have spiked up to $8,900 per ton in September, driven primarily by uh, extremely dry weather in the U.S. As of the filming of this video, the price today has risen above the $9,000 mark. The report notes that Spain, which is the world's largest producer and exporter of olive oil, has seen intense drought for many months now and in fact has just recorded its third hottest summer on record. They're saying that as a result of, of this heat, Spain's olive oil production has slumped to around 610,000 tons. That's a drop of more than 50% compared to its usual output of 1.3 to 1.5 million uh, tons. Compounding the problem is the fact that this spike has prompted olive oil thieves to swing into high gear. Apparently about 50,000 liters or about 420 euros worth of extra virgin olive oil was stolen from one of Spain's oil mills. It's called Marine Serrano Al Lagar on August 30th. And this theft comes on the heels of uh, thieves making off with 6,000 liters of extra virgin olive oil, which is worth around 50,000 euros from another Spanish mill, uh, their Terra Verne mill. As if this isn't bad enough for the industry, Turkey, which is a significant producer of olive oil, has suspended its bulk exports until November the 1st. It should be a good boon here for in Canada for the canola oil industry. Coming up later this week, tomorrow, Thursday, the U.S. leading indicator will be published. On Friday, the global PMI numbers comes out, as well as uh, Canadian retail sales reporting. So it'll be interesting to see uh, where those numbers fall in here. Um, I am here every Monday, every Wednesday with this report. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I would invite you to do that so you can keep up to date on the latest news uh, here in Canada and around the world. As always, I will put a link for our Investing Academy in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Monday.